So I know this is a little weird and a little out there and a little out of the normal for us. Um, but, um, so basically I'm going to be doing my devotion for y'all. Um, yeah, so instead of doing that, wake up because I'm six hours away from wake up. So, um, yeah, we're going to be talking about sacrifices today. Um, and I'm really excited about it because not really excited about it because I feel like it really hits close to home but again it's stuff that we all need to hear and yeah so before we start anything I want to pray for all of us and yeah so if you will just bow your head close your eyes with me thanks dear lord um I just thank you for everyone listening to this right now and the community that we have built that even in this time of confusion and wildness lord that we can still come together and learn about you and talk about you lord and make you the focus because you are the focus lord of all of our lives and we just wish everyone to be healthy and happy lord and Please pray for everyone affected about what the coronavirus, Lord, and we know that your plan is going to work out for the best, Lord, that your plan is for the best, and we need to all be reminded of that, Lord. Thank you. We are so grateful for all the blessings you give us on a daily basis, Lord. Amen. So, now that we pray, <laughs> we're going to get started. Um... So basically I really wanted to do this devotion on sacrifices because I think it's really important that for us to understand that sometimes we have to sacrifice what, you know, what God is calling us to do or, you know, some of our worldly desires over our godly desires. Does that make sense? Kind of, sort of. <laughs> um, so basically the something that really struck with me that I want to share is when you put your happiness into worldly things, you're going to come out with nothing. Um, it took some trial and error, at least for me, but um, I put my happiness into some things um, that were not the healthiest for me. And it really gave me, I felt completely and utterly lost and empty. And it took a, a long time for me to understand and for the light bulb to click that joy is different than happiness. And the only way you get joy is in Christ, I believe. So, which sometimes takes worldly sacrifices. And you might not be able to go to that party. You might not be able to go to what your friends are doing because you might get be tempted. Um, so yeah, um, I looked up the definition of sacrifice because I was kind of curious. And the like, if you look up the word definition of sacrifice, you get out, you get like this weird little like. It's not weird because like it's the actual definition but it's like the slaughtering of an animal and I was like oh. <laughs> and that's kind of intense <laughs> um so of course I mean that's what they used to do in biblical times they used to slaughter animals and give them to their gods but like I don't think we need to do that <laughs> I don't think God wants us to do that so I'm gonna go into that more later but I found a more kind of relevant definition and it says that it defines it is defined as to give up on something at a price which is less than its value which I was like oh, you right you right you right <laughs> um so I just wanted us to like take a minute and like think of like some examples of sacrifice because a lot of people don't really they hear the word sacrifice and they're all like oh yeah I know what that means but like you know like why does that have to do with anything so um yeah so some examples of sacrifice that I came up with was relationships 
time, sleep, aka waking up at 7 o'clock in the morning to go to the Wesley Wake Up, <laughs> um, social media, your comfort zone, and your pride and self gain. Um, I feel like at some time or another, we can all relate to all of those things, and we all get tempted by those things, and because Satan will use whatever and whenever and whatever to try to tempt you away from Jesus and away from God, and if it's, you know, taking your time away that you can't read your Bible in the morning, or it's, oh, I'm, I want to do this because it will bring me the glory and not God the glory. And, you know, everything you truly have to sacrifice these things. And you need to watch where you're coming from to be like, oh, yes. I don't want to sacrifice this just before me. I want to sacrifice this truly for the Lord. And sacrifice needs to be our choices and shouldn't be something that you were asked to do or you know you should be willingly giving it up to the lord and i feel like that's why sometimes people get confused is that um you know people sit down and like oh yeah i sacrificed me going to that party and i'm like no your mom told you you didn't like very different things like you didn't willingly bring it and set it down and um that's what going back to definition like it says something you give up at a lesser price like you know, if you walk into the store and sell in a pair of shoes and they give you, this store gives you $5 for them and then this store gives you $10 for them, you're, you're probably going to sell them to the, like, store that's going to give you the most money, right? But this is saying that, like, you need to be able to, like, it's take out your pride and take out your selfishness and be able to, you know, sell it to the ones that are give you gonna give you the less price and I feel like that's really kind of confusing and kind of something that as humans I feel like we have a very hard grasp of that concept um even me I, <laughs> like as I learned so much about sacrifices that I had no idea about and um so I want to jump into some Bible verses because, of course, we're going to jump into scripture. Um, so, our first Bible verse comes from 1 John um, 2, 15 through 17. So, oof, get myself situated. Okay, so, did I tell you? 1 John 2, 15. Got it? Okay. Do not love the word or anything in the word. If anyone loves the word, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the word, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the word. The word and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. I mean, <laughs> you can't really get more direct than that. And um, I feel like this is a big temptation like passage and it's very much like you will be tempted and if you pick that temptation like you are picking not God's path and and of course like he always forgives you and he will always take you back but walking on God's path that's not worldly is so much easier than walking on the worldly path and you getting in all these temptations because he knows God knows that that's going to hurt you and God knows that you're going to go through harder things down that path than the path with God and you know I think and of course it's all a choice and he would never make it, you do something and it's I mean that's insane but um again I think of this as like a fatherly figure you know he's going to let you fall on your face sometimes and absolutely go all the way down 
but then he's going to be right there with you, picking you up and like walking with you. And, and if I have to sacrifice some of my time in the morning to read the Bible or sacrifice, oh, maybe instead of being 30 minutes on Instagram, I should sit down and read my Bible, like to have that love and to have that grace is worth every minute. And, um, yeah. So, I'm going into the next verse. Um, it is in Titus. Um, it's just, sorry, sidetrack. I love Titus. It's my, almost one of my favorite books in the Bible. It's like the short, it's literally two pages. Look at this. This is Titus. <laughs> but it has such good stuff in here. And if you guys haven't read Titus, Highly recommend. It's also a really cool name that someone should like name their dog. So just saying. Um, so we're gonna start in Titus um, two twelve. It says, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and the worldly passion passions, and to live self controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Mm. Mm. Oof. This has a lot of good stuff in it. Okay, first of all, it t tells us to say no, which I feel like we all kind of struggle with. <laughs> we all kind of get peer pressured. We all be like, oh, this is only one time. God said, literally says, say no to ungodly, worldly things. And then to live a self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. That's the part that gets me every time because it's like this was written so long ago and he knew we were going to be at this point right here right now. Like he knew we were going to be sitting here confused and wild like and it's just it's just so cool that he was just like right where you are 2020 March 2020 sitting there all sitting in our houses because we try not to get the coronavirus like he knew that we were going to be a mess and we were going to be tempted and we were going because that's just human nature so that's a good one too so i have some questions um so i have them written on note cards here because i figured maybe it would help you guys to see them and um, of course we all like can't share or anything i mean but i'm going to share you my answers to help you guys kind of get some ideas or like whatever you know it's basically you know get out your note cards i wesley wake up <laughs> just joking okay so the first question is have you ever sacrificed anything before i feel like i'm on like a makeup channel like <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I'm just joking. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, question number one. Have you ever sacrificed anything before? And question number two. What were your feelings in that decision process? So, basically this question is asking like, so you did sacrifice something. How did you feel about it? Were you mad about it? Were you sad about it? Were you grateful to give it up? Okay. And then the third question is, who have you seen sacrifice for the Lord? <laughs> get, get my makeup hand. Ooh, just kidding. Sorry. Okay. That's the third question. The fourth question is, is there anything you feel God is calling you to sacrifice? This is a big one. I know. And then the last one is, what are some things to help us stay accountable with our sacrifices? Ooh, accountability. We love her. We love her. It was, like, really cute. Okay. Um, okay, so if you guys are struggling with any of the questions, go back, rewind. Good thing this is a video. We don't have to, like, all yell at each other that we don't know what we're talking about. You could just rerun the video. Wow. 
So, um, question number one was again, have you ever sacrificed anything before? Um, I definitely think I've struggled, um, sacrificed my comfort zone. Um, I used to be very shy. I know, shocking. I know. But, um, God really took me by the shoulders and pushed me out of my comfort zone. Um, I mean, with this team, with going on stage, with, like, talking to a camera like this, I would have never done that. Like, this is weird. But, you know, it's fine. Um, also, you know, time, you know, being really, having a close relationship with the Lord takes time and work and sacrifice. Sacrifice. <laughs> I hate myself I'm sorry um so yeah next question <laughs> okay so the question number two was what were your feelings in that decision process um originally very angry <laughs> um not angry but like I was just like I don't want I'm fine living my life the way it is I am totally okay with staying in my comfort zone and being very happy where I was and which was such a lie when I think now back on it I was lying to myself in my head because as soon as I broke out of like my comfort zone and started doing the actual things that I wanted to do I was the happiest I've ever been so and now I'm happy that I sacrificed my comfort zone but back when it was happening or really, really happy, it still happens. But like when it was, when it was the first initial push, I was not happy about it. So the third question was, who have you seen sacrifice for the Lord? Um, sorry, we're gonna get sassy, but um, I definitely think like my mom. Um, my mom has always kind of been the person to sacrifice herself, not only for my family but also the Lord. You know, she's. A foster mom so and that comes with a lot of responsibilities and she gives up her time and you know her you know being able to sit on the couch and watch TV but instead she has to go take care of a baby you know she just you know she just and that was wholeheartedly like what she would want to do and for the Lord and she really believes like that's where she's being called to to help these little kids and that's just so cool to me so she's a really nice lady Becky <laughs> we love her um so number the question number four is there anything you feel God is calling you to sacrifice so <laughs> this is a kind of tough one but um I feel like God is really telling me to kind of step back and look upon my life with like not my eyes but his eyes and i feel like he is asking me to stop holding on to everything so closely and let go sometimes and me not to feel like i need to control every situation because i tend to do that and i tend to be very <laughs> red personality <laughs> but um <laughs> Like, I just tend to very much, I need to control every situation. And, um, yeah, so I feel like God is calling me to sacrifice being controlling. <laughs> and, like, giving it to him. And because if he doesn't have everything, then he has nothing. Does that make sense? So, yeah. Five. What are some things to help us stay accountable with sacrifices? So... Um, I definitely think a community helps 100% and, um, you know, we, that's how we stick together and not get tempted as much, you know, it's always going to happen, but, um, community, prayer, reading your Bible, you know, that all just kind of focuses you in and it kind of reminds you like why you're doing it and you kind of just don't focus on, oh yeah, I really wish I could sleep those extra 30 minutes on Tuesday morning, but oh yeah, okay, I am doing this for a reason, I'm doing this for a purpose. Um, yeah, so those were the five questions. Um, I hope y'all <laughs> liked it. 
You guys don't really get a choice because it's just a video. Oh my god, my phone just almost died. Okay. <laughs> um, so, I just want to pray us out. Um, I, not out because we're not really going anywhere. But um, I just want to again pray for us because I feel like that's what we all need to be doing right now. <laughs> it's just pray and pray and pray. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm going crazy in my house because I haven't left in like a three days and you can only imagine me my energy I have nowhere to go <laughs> I just don't know where to go um so um I'm gonna pray this out and then yeah we'll be done um dear lord again we thank you for bringing us here kind of together um and we just again thank you for all the work you are giving doing in this life lord you were just and let you be the light in this time, Lord, and just come in, Lord, and take our anxiety and our confusion and just take it all, Lord. And Lord, I just again thank you for keeping everyone healthy and Lord, and I just pray for everyone that's dealing and struggling with stuff, Lord, even not related to what's happening, but you know, everyone's still going through their stuff and just because this whole virus thing is happening lord that they're still dealing with that stuff and um lord and i just pray that we start to settle lord and we just fall at your feet and know that your plan is the best plan lord and lord and i just hope that everyone has a good couple of weeks off and everyone has time to decompress and spend time with their families, Lord, and I just thank you so much for everything and all the blessings you give us, and yeah, amen. So, this was kind of weird. Thank you for sticking with me. I was kind of ADHD all over the place, but I hope you guys, I miss all of y'all. I love all y'all. Um, <laughs> just joking. Um, but y'all stay safe please wash your hands do all the stuff um but yeah i love y'all bye <laughs>